a few days after I became speaker, way back in October, we passed our Israel support package. Uh, it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk ever since. The House Republicans and the Republican Party understand the necessity of standing with Israel. We are going to try again uh, this week, and uh, the, the details of that package are being put together right now. We're looking at the options and all these supplemental issues. House Speaker Mike Johnson putting aid to Israel on the front burner of the congressional agenda following Iran's attack on our closest ally in the Middle East. I want to bring in former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Thanks for being here, sir. Morning. So um, this week the House was supposed to have all week long they were going to talk about appliances. And believe me, with the dishwasher that takes three hours, I I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. <laughs> but they're going to set that aside and they're going to focus on foreign policy. There's 17 bills that they're putting forward, aid to Israel and aid to Ukraine possibly, are both on the table. Can Speaker Johnson, with his very narrow majority, get it done? Yes, I think there'll be overwhelming support. The difficulty here is, why are we here? The first thing we need to do is thank our men and women in uniform. They did a tremendous job this weekend helping deflate what went on. But remember what transpired. For the first time in history, Iran sent missiles from their homeland directly into Israel. This is something that has never happened before. And why did it take place? It is the foreign policy of the Biden administration. What he did in Afghanistan, the, the allowing of raising the sanctions uh, of the oil to produce not 400,000 barrels a day, but 3 million. Iran has billions of dollars now, and they're funding terrorism everywhere around. Congress has been slow to act. They should have taken care of this back in October because the world looks much different. It looks a lot like the 1930s. You have not just Iran, but Russia, North Korea, and China creating the axis of evil bounding together. We only saw this in the 30s. So the actions that the House and Senate take really sends a message throughout the world. It has been delayed since October 7th. We're talking six months before we have taken action on Israel. I think it was a mistake to try to put a pay for on this. It sends the wrong message around the world. Much of this funding will go to reproduce weaponry for our own stockpiles because we have been sending, just as we used missiles this weekend, to deflect what Iran was sending. It's our own stockpiles here in America. We should not be depleted. We should not be in a, a weaker situation. But if you simply look back to what then uh, Vice President Biden wrote in 2020 about the policy for uh, the Middle East, it shows every decision he made has been wrong. Secretary Gates has been right. His change in foreign policy here has led to five embassies evacuating from America on foreign soil. What happened in Afghanistan, the movement to our allies looking towards China, and now for the first time in history, Iran sending missiles into Israel. I'll be just to add to that. The, the, the Middle East has changed, period. Yes. Like in our lifetimes, there are alliances now that never existed before. And if you just listen to the end of Jennifer's report there, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE coming to Israel's defense, this is a remarkable moment. Um, really one to yeah, behold. But, and, and but, in the meantime, let's, let's though, look yeah, at let, why. Let me get to this. Dems, okay. Dems are divided on the whole idea. And John Fetterman, the Democratic senator from Pennsylvania, he, he just pierced that point on CNN Sunday. Watch him what he, uh, what he said there. I think it really demonstrates how it's astonishing that we are not uh, standing firmly with Israel and there should never be any kinds of conditions on all of that. When a nation can launch hundreds of drones uh, towards Israel, and I'm not going to be talking about conditions all ever. Right. Okay, your witness. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I think there's an excellent position. I think Fetterman has been superior when it comes to his position on how to deal with Israel. But remember with President Biden being sworn in January 2020, why are all those nations working together? The Abraham Accords. This is something that we've never seen before. That should have been a Nobel Prize recipient because of what happened there. But had President Biden embraced the Abraham Accords on the day he was sworn in, Saudi Arabia would be a part of it today. October 7th would it never take place. And this weekend would not have taken place, and the hostages would still not be held today. This is a uniqueness in the policy change from the last administration. But you actually have Democrats as Fetterman, but that's not where the majority of Democrats have been. They have shifted their position on Israel. They have shifted politically, and you've watched the president shift as well from October 7th today, leaning more towards uh, where this Democrat party is going, uh, appeasement to a terrorist organization. It's not not acceptable and it's causing more harm and we are less safe today because of it. Thank you so much. It was interesting to see how many Democrats um, put out a lot of statements in support of Israel 
as those missiles rain down on Saturday night. Kevin McCarthy, thanks for being here. We'll Thank you, sir. Stay in touch. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.